What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In the previous video, we got comfortable with Roblox Studio and navigating the interface of Roblox Studio. In this video, we're gonna get comfortable with building things in Roblox Studio using basic parts and shapes. By the end of this video, you will have made a very simple house and anything else you want to. When this video is over, I encourage you to just go crazy and try to build whatever it is you want to build. Uh, the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll get and the better you'll get. So what are parts? Parts are the building blocks in Roblox Studio. Cubes, spheres, wedges, cylinders. To insert a part, make sure the home tab is selected in the top bar and you can just click this part button in underneath the insert section uh, there is a drop down uh, arrow you can click and then you can select the exact part you want to insert i'm going to do a block you could also insert it by just going to workspace clicking the plus button searching for part and then inserting another part i'm going to delete one of them we can move, scale, and rotate the part very easily with these tools. Uh, underneath the Home tab in the top bar, there is a Tools section. So we've got Move, Scale, and Rotate. You can press Control-1 to select the Select tool, Control-2 for the Move tool, Control-3 for the Scale tool, and Control-4 for the Rotate tool. If you're on Mac, press Command one command two command three command four uh, i usually just click on them to select them though so the move tool does what it says it moves the part around in the scene you just select the arrows uh, on the part and you just drag it to where you want it to be the scale tool scales up the object to be bigger or smaller whichever it is that you're trying to do you just use these gizmos to scale it up the way you want rotate tool rotates the part however it is you want just get comfortable with rotating it on these three different axes you'll notice that when we try to rotate it rotates in increments this is called snapping and we can turn that on or off to turn it on or off select the model tab from the top bar and you should see a snapping section uh, both boxes are checked by default you could also select your snapping change your snapping increments to be smaller or larger like if we did 15 and then now we rotate we should have more precise control over how it rotates uh, again you can just turn this off and and then it, you can be extremely precise in how you rotate it I'm going to leave it on and that goes for moving as well so you'll see the move snap is set to one stud if we move it it's moving it one stud at a time and a stud is just a unit of measurement that Roblox Studio uses we could turn it up to 10 studs and now when we move it it moves it 10 studs at a time snapping is very useful there will be times where you need, need to turn it off for precise movement and rotation and scale. That's fine. Uh, if you want, you could just turn it off by default. Actually, let's yeah, let's leave it off by default. And I'm actually just going to delete this part, and I'm going to add in another part, just so we can start fresh. If we select the part, there will be properties that fill in our properties window. We can adjust these to our liking to modify the part. So we could change the brick color. We could change the material. So if we did ice, if we press F to zoom in on it. Let's do ice again and F to zoom in. We'll see it. It gives it a texture to make it look like ice. We could do fabric. We could do whatever we wanted to. We could do diamond plate. We can change the transparency. We can make it see-through or semi-see-through. 
semi-transparent. Let's move this out a little bit away from our spawn location. And we can anchor the tool, I mean the part. Now what this will do, this will just lock it into place. So like if we don't anchor it and we press play, see how it's in the air right now? It should just fall down to the ground. And there it is. It is on the ground, but if we anchor it by checking this property, it will stay in the air and it'll lock it into place. It'll anchor it down. We can also anchor it by going to the model tab and clicking anchor. If we unclick it, it should not be anchored now. And if we click it, it should be anchored. We've got a reflectance property. I'm going to turn my transparency back down. I'm going to press F to zoom in on it. I'm going to turn the reflectance all the way up. You really can't tell a difference because we're using diamond plate. But let's try ceramic tiles. And then let's turn the reflectance down. Yeah, I really can't tell a difference, but it's there if you need it. I'm going to turn it back down to zero. And then underneath collision, we've got can collide and can touch. So if we were to turn can collide off, that would make it to where we cannot collide with the part, but we would just go through it. it might be hard to tell, but I am going through the part. I'm going to turn can collide back on. Can touch is something that we could turn off if we definitely don't want to script any kind of functionality on the part. Uh, so we would make it to where it would just make it to where you can't send a touch event. But we'll get into that in a future video. I just wanted to show y'all can collide uh, if, if you're trying to build a part that you could walk through. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. We're just gonna make a wall. Now I'm going to duplicate the part by pressing Command D, Control D on Windows. That will duplicate the part and put it exactly where it is or where it was previously. Uh, but there is a second part there. It's just hard to see because it put it in the exact same spot. So we're going to move it. We are going to rotate it. And let's just go ahead and build the walls for our house. So I'm going to go back and turn rotate snapping on so I can rotate it two rotations to get a perfect 90 degree rotation. I'm going to go back to my move tool. I'm going to move it into place. And let's do Instead of ceramic tiles uh, for the material, select both of them, both of your parts, and let's do brick. So we're gonna make a brick house. And when you are moving stuff around and, and working with building objects in Roblox Studio, this gizmo up here is very handy as you can get a perfect top view by just clicking the top of this cube and you'll see it says top right here. If you want to go to the side, click the side arrow. And yeah, get comfortable with that. You can also, I guess something I should have covered in the last video, you can pan the camera around by clicking the middle mouse button and dragging left or right or up and down. This will, this will drag the camera sideways. Uh, but yeah, we want a perfect top view. Go ahead and select another wall. Control D. Move it into place. Control D again. Now we want to rotate it 90 degrees. Select our move tool and move it into place. So there is our four walls for our house. Let's anchor these walls. So let's go down 
select all of them and go down and make sure anchored is checked it already is checked so let's add a roof to our house let's use a I'm thinking a wedge part so let's insert a wedge we're gonna use two wedges actually and we are going to scale it up if you hold down shift while dragging one of the axes it will scale it on all axes so we're going to do that a little bit and we are going to move it into place scale it down a little bit All right, duplicate this part. Rotate it 180 degrees. Move it into place. See, it's a little bit further on this side than it is on this side, so let's center it up. Just select both of them. Hold down Control and click uh, the other part and then center it the best you can that looks all right and now we have a roof so let's select the material and let's do roof shingles We will do black for the roof, or we'll do, yeah, we'll do that black. And there we go, we've got a roof. Let's make sure that it's anchored, so it's not. So make sure they're both selected and then click anchored. And so when you're building something and you got multiple parts to whatever it is that you are building, uh, it's really helpful if you can group them all together that way you can just move that one object instead of having to highlight all of these parts and then moving them around. Uh, so to do that, you just highlight all the parts. A easy way to do that is just click the first part, hold down shift and click the last part. And then press control G to group them into a model. And then you can just move the model around and you can scale up the model however you want and yeah it just makes it easier to deal with uh, a group of parts that you have for one object let's say you group some parts together but you want to ungroup them you would just select your model and then press control U or command U on a Mac and that'll ungroup them uh, I want to group them again so I'm going to hold down command or control G I also recommend whenever you do group them into a model uh, to name that model to be whatever it is that you're you are building so we're just gonna call it house there are other things that we could go over in the model tab in the top bar uh, for example we could uh, go over the joint surfaces uh, the solid modeling constraints uh, but I wouldn't worry about that right now. I would just focus on building simple structures like this and using uh, anchoring and just some of the basic properties until you get comfortable with that. And then we will cover those in future videos. Yeah, so we've got a, we've got a house now. Uh, there's no door or anything, but you could you could do that uh, on your own. Actually, that is a great challenge. I would challenge you to make a door for your house. So just make a house that uh, has a slot in it where we could walk in the house and walk out of the house. We'll also go over terrain tools in a future video. 
so we're not going to cover that in this video uh, but the terrain tool is for more advanced building you can create hills mountains and other natural features but we will go again we'll go into more depth on that in a future video later in this series and don't forget to save frequently just save to Roblox you should already have it saved to Roblox so test it out make sure that when you press play the house doesn't like fall apart or anything and that it is the way you want it to look we're not going to use this for the game we're making I just wanted y'all to get comfortable with the building tools in Roblox Studio and thought a house would be a good challenge uh, but it's still a challenge that you're fully capable of doing so uh, yeah get comfortable make a house make anything else you want to make get comfortable uh, with basic parts and using those parts in Roblox Studio and in the next video we are going to cover some basic scripting in Roblox Studio starting with how to make an interactive object and so that'll do it for this video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the, in the next one